What is up guys, Karma Medic here and welcome back to another dose. If you're new to the channel, hi, my name is Nasser and I'm now a fourth year medical student studying at King's College London. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you exactly how I was able to push myself and motivate myself daily in order to study 1,620 hours over a six month period in preparation for a huge medical school exam. I started studying for this exam in mid February and I finished in middle of August and I was doing between eight to 10 hours of studying a day. The exam I took is called the USMLE Step 1. It's an eight hour long exam that covers four years of biomedical science material and the first three years of medical school. So it has a ton of content, so much to learn and so much to do. And so that's why you have to study for it over such a long period of time. Throughout this study period, my studying schedule was to wake up at 7.30 and study from nine till one, take a lunch break from one till three, study from three till seven, take a dinner break till 8.30 and then study from 8.30 till 10.30 p.m. So 10 hours of studying a day, really only taking breaks in order to eat and then at nighttime to relax and have a little bit of fun. So how did I do it? How did I study for eight to 10 hours a day for 180 days in a row? Here's how. The first thing that you need, and honestly, there is no way around this, you need a very strict studying schedule. I'm talking about a rigid studying schedule, like this has to be made out of stainless steel. If you've got thousands of pages of reading to do, a couple thousand questions, and hundreds of hours of videos to watch, you have to be very efficient with your time. And the best way to do this is to know exactly how your time is being spent and what you wanna dedicate your time to. I've spoken about my personal four hour study block method in previous videos, but honestly, it doesn't matter how you study or how you choose to break up your time throughout the day. Just have a set number of hours that you want to dedicate towards studying and towards learning and make sure that they get met. The key to studying for such a huge exam or working on a project of this scale is consistency and having a studying schedule helps you maintain that consistency over long periods of time because there's no point in working really hard on one day and then doing nothing the next day or taking a long break. You have to be able to do a good amount of work consistently. So when you make a schedule, no matter how you choose to make it, you need to stick to it. When that friend calls you and asks you to go for coffee, you have to say no. And when your friends hit you up on the group chat and wanna play some Warzone on the PlayStation, sometimes you just have to say no. If something comes up in the middle of the day during your studying time, as best as you can, put that aside, put it in your to-do list and tell yourself when you're going to do that thing later. But try and make sure that you actually do the things that you've set out for yourself for that day. The less exceptions that you have or the less times that you let yourself break away from your studying schedule, the less likely you are to do that in the future. At the end of the day, all of this hard work that you're putting in and this studying, you're not doing for anybody else, you're doing it for you. And so if you make a promise to yourself and stick to what you've told yourself, then you won't let yourself down. It's all about discipline, discipline, discipline. Set a goal, plan out that goal and stick to it effectively. The second thing that you absolutely have to do, and I really encourage no exceptions to this rule, is that you need to include something in your day or in your life that you actually find enjoyable, something that you actually have fun doing. Because there's no point in sitting down and studying forever, 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 just hating yourself, getting depressed, feeling sad, losing motivation. You have to sprinkle in that studying and that hard work with other things that bring you joy and make you happy in your life. Whether that's hanging out with your friends, playing video games, drawing, reading, whatever it is that you enjoy doing, make sure that you find time to actually do that and schedule it in. Just like you put in your schedule that you to study for four hours, you also want to put in one hour of free time, one hour of happiness, one hour of whatever I want. Me personally, I would stop studying at 10.30 p.m. and then I would have two hours from 10.30 to 12.30 to do all of these things. I would edit and record YouTube videos, I would catch up with my friends via calls, I would do my exercise like going for runs. Now if relaxing or having fun at 10.30 p.m. doesn't work for you, obviously that's perfectly fine. You can schedule in those hours of having fun or doing what you enjoy at any point in your day. As long as you stay on top of the studying that you you've told yourself you're going to do, you can use your free time or fun time and put it in wherever you want. The third thing that I want to talk about, and I can't stress this enough, is exercise. Exercise is just it's such an incredible way of having a reset in your day, of creating a blank slate in your mind, of sort of getting all of that stress and tension that you have in your body and releasing it. Any way that you can physically exert yourself is gonna be a good way of relieving stress. Whether that's going on long runs or going to the gym or even something as simple as jogging or walking around your block. 
any way that you can physically exert yourself and get yourself moving and sweating. This is all scientifically proven to help improve your mental health, help improve your mood, and it will actually help you when you sit down to study because you'll be in a better headspace. During this really long studying period, I became very serious about running and I would run somewhere between seven and 10 kilometers every two to three days or so. And I can't state the positive impact that it had on my life, that it had on my studying. And I can honestly say that if I didn't do all of that running, I don't think I would have been able to study for that long. Along with doing regular exercise comes healthy eating. I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that in this video. I do have a couple of videos about cooking up on my channel if you would like to check them out. Healthy body, healthy mind. It's a very true statement. Okay, now let's talk about managing your stress appropriately. Now, I don't wanna tell you guys how to manage your stress. Everybody is different and everybody manages their stress in their own way. But the important part about this section is to learn how to identify when you're stressed and learn what works best for you in order to be able to cope and deal with that stress. Whether you deal with your stress more in an emotional way and you want to talk it out and call your friends or your family or you deal with it in a more practical way and you create to-do lists and you know plans on how you want to eliminate that source of stress in your life whatever it is that you do make sure that you identify it and you actually do it don't let stress build up for long periods of time and just bottle up inside you because one day it will all come out and because this studying process is so long it's important that you manage your stress throughout the whole time as opposed to in random bursts every couple of weeks or months so now let me tell you about my personal way of managing stress and what personally works for me. So besides doing exercise as regularly as I can to sort of get rid of all of that stress and tension from my body physically, whenever a stressor arises for me throughout the day, I almost always deal with it as soon as it arises, get rid of it, get it out of my way. Because once it's off of my to-do list or off the forefront of my mind, I can get back to what I was originally doing. Of course, there's times when this isn't possible. And if that's the case, I make sure to write it down on my to-do list. And I tell myself exactly when I'm going to deal with the stressor or exactly how I'm going to deal with the stressor in the future. That way, because I already know how I'm going to tackle this in the future, I won't be sitting about it and thinking about it while I'm trying to study or do whatever is in front of me. If I have any stressors throughout the day that are out of my control or I can't deal with at that time, then I will physically envision taking that stressor in my head and moving it into my 10 minute box. Now my 10 minute box is this thing that I came up with probably when I started university. And it's this idea that I take these stressors that are bothering me and I move them to a separate part of my brain and I close them off in a box so that I don't think about them at this current time. At the end of each day, I give myself exactly 10 minutes to think about these stressors, process the emotions that are associated with them and figure out a plan for how I'm gonna eliminate them in my life. And although this sounds kind of weird, it's something that works for me. And what I will usually do is actually set a 10 minute timer on my phone so that I don't spend any longer than 10 minutes thinking about all of these negative things in my life. When those 10 minutes are over, hopefully I have a plan for how I'm gonna deal with that stress, which I've probably written down on a to-do list or something like that. And if not, then I will just put them back in that box, close up that box and deal with it tomorrow. Now, the reason that I do this is because these types of stressors, these really big overarching stressors are usually ones that are completely out of my control. And I don't like to spend my time or waste my time thinking about things or stressing about things that are out of my control, obviously because I can't change them even if I wanted to. So that's just what works for me and I encourage you guys to find whatever stress management plan works for you and use that as often as possible. Now moving on to something else that I think is really, really important and is probably half the battle when it comes to tackling such a huge project or studying period like this, is your mindset. So your mindset is how you think about the task that you're actually doing, your motivations, your worries, and sort of from what angle you approach what it is that you're doing. So for example, when I decided to write this exam about seven months ago now, I knew for a fact that I was gonna lose out on my summer, I wasn't gonna be able to do as many social activities as I wanted to, and in fact, I was gonna be doing something every single day that is pretty high stress and is gonna take a lot of energy from me. And something that really helps me with that is sort of looking at the bigger picture. What is it that I'm really doing here? Obviously I'm studying every single day in order to do this exam, but the reason that I'm doing this exam is so that I can keep my options open in the future for where I would possibly want to practice medicine. And if I know for a fact that that's something that I want to do and that is something that I'm okay with, then it sort of makes everything that comes after it easy to follow and sort of automatic. I like to think about these sort of big life decisions in a sort of like flowchart type of way. So let's say at the very top of the flowchart you have, do I want to have the option to practice medicine in multiple different countries? Yes or no. And then everything else underneath it sort of just follows on from that and it becomes the obvious or logical next step. I really find that Anytime you can take a small sliver of something positive out of a bad situation, anytime you can look at something from a sort of happy or brighter perspective, it helps so, so, so much for 
just your mood, your mental health, and generally tackling these really big projects. I try and always look for the positive in whatever it is that I'm doing, as long as I've already satisfied that higher order decision, and I've told myself this is actually what I do want to do. I feel like that might have been a little bit confusing and not made the most sense. If you want anything clarified, let me know in a comment down below. All right, and the last point that I want to mention in this video is about focusing on the task that is directly in front of you. So when I think about this exam, and I think about the fact that I have to study for six months, that is super overwhelming. When I think about the fact that then I had to get through both of these super dense and heavy books Then I had to do thousands of practice questions, listen to hundreds of hours of videos and make all kinds of long booklets of notes. That is very, very overwhelming and rightfully so. It is a huge, huge project to tackle. So every single day when I woke up or every night before I went to sleep, I made a plan of directly what I wanted to do over the next 24 hours or over the next 12 hours, six hours, one hour, 30 minutes, whatever it is. I find that the best way to actually start doing something is to break Break it down into all of its smaller tasks, into all of its smaller parts. And then those small parts are so manageable. They're so simple and easy. For example, if I want to do 20 pages of reading in a day, I'll tell myself, okay, how about I complete the first five pages of reading in the next hour? Once I finish that hour, I can say, all right, now let me complete five pages of reading in the next hour. And that way I'm always focused on directly what I need to do in the next period of time that's ahead of me, as opposed to thinking about the bigger picture, which can sometimes really stress me out or cause me to, you know, think about everything and make me overwhelmed, which I just didn't need at the time. So for me, I usually think about these smaller blocks in terms of four hour blocks, but you can be as small and as specific as you want. And the smaller and more specific you go, the more manageable and easy or simple those tasks are to complete. And every time you complete a task, every time you do something that you told yourself you were gonna do, please, please, please tick that off of some list. Physically ticking off tasks that you need to do is such a good feeling. You know, if you cross out something you had on your to-do list, this is genuinely a good feeling that helps motivate you, helps you see how much work you have done and how much work is still ahead of you. So I would encourage you, however it is that you want to visualize the fact that you are doing work, the fact that you are completing objectives that you've set for yourself, just do it in some way. Staying motivated and studying so intensely for such a long period of time is something that honestly was very hard for me to do. And I'm sure other students find it hard to do as well. So I hope that this video has helped you in some way, shape or form. If you did like the video, please do leave a like on it and also subscribe to my channel to see more content from me in the future. If you've got any questions for me, you can leave them in a comment down below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If there's any one of the topics that I discussed in this video, which you'd like me to go into more detail in in the future, please also let me know down below. Best of luck in whatever exam or project you're preparing for. I hope you do really well and I will see you in the next one. Peace. Physically ticking off these tasks, physically, physically ticking these tis, ticking these tisks. <laughs> That's the blooper for this video.